Welcome to our lecture online. Well, if you still don't believe that the theory of general relativity is real, here's one more proof. It turns out that if we didn't account for the gravitational effects as well as the relativistic effects due to high speeds of the satellites, we would not be able to utilize GPS. We would not be able to find ourselves or any object that we're looking for accurately with GPS. So let me explain. We have a number of GPS satellites up in space. It's probably more than 30 now. They're at a distance in such a way that each satellite goes around the Earth about twice every 24 hours. So they're not quite a geosynchronous orbit. They're also not at low orbit. They're somewhere in between. And we're able to figure out where on Earth we are by having a GPS receiver and receiving signals from the GPS satellites. Of course, in order to accurately determine where we are on the surface of the Earth, we need to have precise timing between the GPS receiver and the clocks on the GPS satellite. Those clocks, that timing has to be extremely accurate because if we're off by one nanosecond, which is a very small amount of time, of course, well, in one nanosecond, the signal travels a whole foot, one third of a meter. And so 10 nanoseconds would be 10 feet and 100 nanoseconds would be 100 feet. So you see very quickly, if there's a difference in the timing between the receiver and the satellite, you'd very quickly become very inaccurate in trying to determine where exactly you are. So what happens? Well, there are two effects we need to deal with. The first effect is the special theory of relativity. Because the satellites travel at very high velocities, there's a slight difference in the time between the the receiver on Earth, and between the satellite up in space. It turns out that satellite clocks run slower because of the speed than a clock on the receiver. So we need to make an adjustment for that, and there's the equation that we use to make that adjustment. V is the velocity of the satellite, C is the speed of light, T sub naught is the time of the clock on the satellite, and T is the time of the clock on the receiver. But that's not the only thing. There's another aspect we have to deal with, which is called the general theory of relativity, which says that the gravitational force close to Earth is greater than the gravitational force where the satellites are, and therefore, where the GPS receivers are, the time runs slower than the, G than the clocks on the satellite. So it's kind of a reverse action. And the equation we need to use to calculate the difference in time is right here where G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass of the Earth, R is the radius of the Earth, and C is the speed of light. And so by calculating both, we can then make adjustments to the equations we use in the software on the satellites and the software on the receivers so that we can actually communicate and have that adjustment for the time difference. Otherwise, GPS satellites wouldn't work at all. So if we don't make the adjustments, the satellites, the GPS receivers would not be good at all. We'd we wouldn't know where we are for there would be large errors in the positioning of the receivers but if we take the equations into account and we add that to the equations in the uh, in the software then all of a sudden the, the gps receivers become very accurate and we can very accurately determine where we are we need to make the adjustment the adjustments are necessary because again we've proven that these equations are required to make the gps work Without it, it wouldn't work. With it, it works. It just shows again, it proves again, that the general theory of relativity, just like the special theory of relativity, is real and must be adjusted for. Otherwise, our GPS would not work appropriately. And let's see. Oh, here, I have a note. They are opposite in effect, but they don't cancel out. So they need to be calculated separately and add it together. Now, if they were to cancel out, we could ignore it, but they don't cancel out. They are of different magnitudes, and so therefore we do have to take them into account. Does it matter where the GPS is? Is it the exact perfect orbit? So does it matter? So notice that the line of action where we are always changes, right? So as the satellite goes, we always look at the satellite into different directions. But the clock here is always going to be affected by the velocity. And that's going to be the same as long as the, the, the orbits are fairly circular. They're very close to being nice circles. And so therefore, this always have to be taken into account no matter where they are. And then our receiver clocks run differently because we're on location. It doesn't matter where on the surface of the Earth we are, 
we are going to be affected by that equation. So it really, those are the two equations that always need to be taken into account, regardless of where the satellite is and regardless where we are on the Earth's surface. Do you know that distance changes because you're in geosynchronous orbit? So yeah, the distance always changes. So they're always tracking the satellites, right? So there's always multiple satellites going in all different directions. And simultaneously, we're tracking multiple satellites at the same time and then doing the coordination of where they're at, and that helps us figure out exactly where we are on the surface. So the distance doesn't make a difference? We account for the distance. So we, we, well, but that's in different kind of calculations. That has nothing to do with the special or general theory of relativity, but it does have to do with the tracking algorithms, right? We have to acquire and track targets. So we lose the target when it disappears over the horizon, and then we pick up new targets, new satellites, as they appear on the horizon, then we, you know, so always acquire and track satellites on a continual basis.